Well, let's discuss an extraordinary 24 hours with a couple of uh, journalists and commentators. The columnist for The Mail on Sunday, Peter Hutch Hitchens, is with me alongside Anushka Asana, who is joint political editor of The Guardian. Welcome to both. Um, Peter Hitchens, I've interviewed quite a few uh, outers today who said, although, of course, they wanted to win, they thought they would win, they were still really, really shocked. Uh, you, you less shocked, it seems to me, no, from what I've been reading. I, I've, I've thought for several weeks that it would be an outvote, and I'd, as soon as I realised that the Labour vote, the old Labour working class vote, was swinging heavily for out, then I was sure the combination of them with the old guard of the Tories would win it, and that's what has happened. And that, and that one of the key area, that's one of the key issues for you, the, the, the collapse for Labour. Well, it's sort of collapse on the part of uh, Labour. It's, as it's, in, it's, uh, it's what a, I mean is that their, their leader said, well, I think you should vote in, but it, a lot of yeah, them didn't. It's a reappearance of something that, which, which died, which is the old Conservative patriotic part of the, of the Labour Party, which has been suppressed and ignored by Blairite's leadership for many years. And here it is, it found a way of actually expressing itself. In the normal general election, it was loyal to Labour. It either didn't vote for Labour or it certainly didn't vote Tory, but on this occasion it's been able to come out and give a really serious kicking to people it doesn't like. I think it's very encouraging. I've always thought that the, there was a, a great possibility in this country for a coalition between that vote and, and the, the, the old-fashioned socially conservative Tories who've been similarly sidelined by their Blairite leadership. And now it's happened, so the Blairites are on the run, which has to be a good thing for anybody's point of view. And uh, well, clearly something did happen for the Labour Party here. 210 plus of its MPs campaigning to stay in the EU and lots of people in Labour heartlands clearly voting out. And I know I spent some time recently all around the country in Labour heartlands talking to people about immigration and everywhere you went people were shouting for out. I have to say I wasn't so sure in the final few days that that was the way the vote was going to go because I was back here and there was a mood, Downing Street were quite confident. They thought they were going to win and in the early hours of this morning, I'll tell you what, the advisers in Downing Street, the Labour advisers, they were close to tears. They are absolutely devastated by That's what we've really seen That's really good here. to know. It's really good to know that those people are in tears. Those people who have been systematically ignoring their own voters and supporters for so long. And comical to see a political party, almost for all of whose MPs, disagree so profoundly on a very important issue with the, with the voters who've kept them in office. Well, uh, and it's amazing that this thing has now been revealed, that we have two political parties now, both the Conservatives and the Labour Party, who disagree profoundly with more than half of the electorate on a 72% turnout. How come our major political parties are so completely out of touch with the, with the people who actually keep them in office? And so the, it, it's if, it's, if it's that fundamental, yeah, it is what, that fundamental. What, what, what changes there what, now? What ought to change is both those parties, which are in any case political uh, corpses, propping each other up with each other's rigor mortis, collapse and are replaced, as they should have been long ago, by new parties which actually reflect the real divisions in the country. OK, but that's, I mean, that's something that doesn't happen quickly. No, let's, is, let's, that's, let's that is what ought to happen as a result. All right, let's that, talk is, first of all the about important next the, 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 nearer, the nearer future. Let's start with, with Labour. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn, we've got the, the vote of no, we've got the, the letter talking about no confidence. We've got John Speller, Stephen Kinnock added to that in the last hour. Will he go next week? Could it be that quick, Anusha? Well, the recriminations are flying. We'll have this no confidence motion probably at the PLP meeting on Monday or it might be next week if they need to give him longer. You would expect there to be a majority of MPs who want him gone. As we know, the membership of the Labour Party disagrees and there's a real fight over who is really to blame. You know, some Labour sources saying to me tonight that Corbyn's aides were trying to sabotage the uh, pro-EU campaign. Corbyn's aides saying, actually, no, we tried really hard and we were closer to what the public actually wanted. One thing we know is that Jeremy Corbyn does not want to go anywhere and that he will fight any attempt to depose him. It's not clear whether it's constitutionally acceptable for them to try to remove him. But it's not just about this referendum. There are people who have wanted Jeremy Corbyn gone for quite a while, MPs, and what they say or feel is that they can't win a general election with him as a leader and they don't want to lose their own jobs. Clearly, well, they, they he disagrees. General election, they can't win a general election without him as leader either, that's the problem. The, the, the Parliamentary Labour Party is incessantly trying to get rid of Jeremy Corbyn. It's what they, they spend their lives doing. They have almost no other, uh, no other form of activity, but it, th this is just another pretext. All Actually, right, Jeremy Corbyn is closer to the Labour voters 
on this than they are. He, well, I think, I mean, in, in, in truth, he's, he's been against the European Union for most of his political career, and he's much closer to, to, to the voters well, than depends. they are. And if they, for them to get rid of him, why don't they all resign? They have just oh. established beyond okay, doubt that okay, they don't speak for their own but, voters. But we don't have. Let's also talk about the Conservative Party, though. Oh yes, let's. <laughs> well. I this dislike is, them even more. Well, and this is this is where it all began. David Cameron promised this yeah. referendum. Now that's that's lost him his job, or will do come come October. Then what? How, how, these big beasts of the cabinet who okay. were so split. This is, what happens? Do they dead, work this together? Is what dead, happens? This is a dead party. It's just been proved beyond doubt that this party does not speak for its own voters. And, but and for the, now, uh, it is still, well, it's still in government. It's, still it's got to keep it's, going. It's, what what it's, does it do in there. the next few months? It's there by virtue of of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of broadcasting rules, which give it prominence it doesn't deserve, and money supplied to it by various dodgy billionaires. Well, and it has, it has, it has no other, it has no true Brexit. popular support. Let's be honest. What yeah. we need now is a general election in which the in which the the the, the, the two parties which have formed in a sort of ghostly fashion in the past few weeks, the exit and the remain parties fight each other because they much more truly represent the division in this country than the Tory and Labour parties who are actually almost the same thing. They're both Blairites, so they agree with each other far more than they disagree with each other and we now establish right. that both those parties disagree with the people. Well, the people want you to they feature instead. Maybe they will, that's up to them, but they certainly don't like the two main parties. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Peter Hitchens, Anushka Astana, thank you very much uh, for now. Only for now. Plenty, plenty more to come.